For the past few months, I've actually been really busy. Well, I'm always busy working on videos and stuff, but this time it's a different kind of busy. Busy as in, I'm leaving the house and doing things like an average person. In my defense, it's a lot more than normal, okay? Don't judge me yet. In April, there was VidCon Europe, then in May, I went to Phoenix Comic Con, I was moving, followed by VidCon US, and right after that, we had a meetup in Boise, Idaho. It was nuts, and I almost emotionally died. But that's not the point. I did a lot of traveling, and I'm gonna talk about that part. I think it's a fairly common thing to have traveled at least a little bit, and if you haven't, you should leave. Just kidding, you can stay. It's okay. I don't know about any other airports, but the one I went to in Arizona had bathrooms that were almost completely hands-free. I'm talking automatic toilets, hands-free sinks, hands-free soap and paper towel dispensers. You could walk in and pretty much touch nothing. I had a moment in there where I thought, whoa, if you had no arms or hands, you could totally still use this bathroom. Thinking like, man, this is so progressive. And then I had the realization, oh wait, people without hands don't need to wash their hands. I want to talk about passport photos. Can we talk about passport photos for a sec? Like, people aren't allowed to smile anymore? Uh, I don't like that rule. They say it can make it more difficult for facial recognition if you're smiling, but okay, put it this way. Not smiling in my passport photo made me look like I'm a drug dealer who smoked too much alcohol. And I'm just looking out for the police here, but 99% of the time, I'd like to think that I don't look like that. Hopefully. Moving sidewalks. There's not much else to say here. I really love the moving sidewalks airports have, and I wish more places had them. I've imagined, what if we replaced cars and roads with moving sidewalks? Because then people can just go at speeds they want to, and if you crash into someone, then it's like, oh, sorry, man and there's less blood and death and stuff. Each lane could have a different belt speed, getting faster as you go to the left. And to go even faster, you can just run and go super speed. Think of all the other benefits replacing cars and roads would have. It could reduce pollution, you don't need to pay for gas, it'll get people in shape, you get to feel like Sonic. And most importantly, moving sidewalks are cool. And I wanna walk on them more than just in airports because they're cool. Opening the topic to more than just the airport, actually boarding the plane is a complete hassle. First of all, you have to walk down the aisle to your seat and it always seems like there's a person that's trying to get from seat 30 to like seat six in the middle of everyone getting on. The aisle's barely wide enough for someone to just stand in. Attempting to squish past the flow of everyone isn't gonna get anyone anywhere anytime soon. And like, Dude, if you have seat six, how do you even get to the very back of the plane without realizing you should have turned around sooner? It's in numerical order. There's never gonna be a situation where you're walking down and it's like, seat 24, seat 25, seat 26. Oh, seat three, there it is. If you're stuck in the back, just wait until it's more clear to walk. You've got time, don't worry. It's not gonna be like, okay, everyone's on the plane, going up. It's also weird to think that the strangers around you are the people who you're gonna be spending the next how many hours with. I get nervous thinking about who's gonna be in the seat next to me because it's a complete gamble and I have no idea what they're gonna be like. For one of my flights, when I got to my seat, the people next to me were already there. And even though I'm super shy, I still wanted to be polite. So I tried to catch their eye to give them a friendly smile. Like, I know we're strangers who don't know a thing about each other and are about to spend four hours on the border of popping our personal bubbles, but hey, we cool. I wanted to do that type of smile at them, but I couldn't. I was trying to make quick eye contact to do it, but they were totally acting like I wasn't there. I attempted a few more times and then realized there's a relatively big chance they could tell I kept glancing at them, which is weird in and of itself. And if they actually let me catch their eye after that, the fact that I would have just smiled at them and said nothing probably would have given the opposite type of effect I was going for. So that was something I was anxious about during the entire flight. There's this little girl across the aisle from me. By the way, the aisle is the far superior of all other seats. I mean, sure, window seat has the window, but it's the same thing after like 20 minutes. Clouds. The aisle lets you easily get up and go to the bathroom without having to shove your butt in your neighbor's face, and you're not trapped in the corner like a sardine. Writing this script made me think airplanes are kind of like flying human tins of sardines. Either way, if we don't agree on the obvious superiority of the aisle seat, I think we can both safely agree no one likes the sad sack of the middle seat. No one. If you do, no you don't. Anyway, so there was this little girl across the aisle from me and she was super chipper and peppy, talking to her mom and having fun. At one point she looked over at me and said, I like your shoes. And you know how you get into a mode where you aren't expecting anyone to try and communicate or interact with you, so you kind of go into life autopilot? Well, I was in the middle of that, so she really caught me off guard and I had to quickly reboot and say, 
Oh, thank you. It was nice of her to say, but man, did she catch me at a bad time. My brain was completely out to lunch. I thought it was also funny that after she said that, she immediately looked at her mom like, did you see me be nice and compliment that girl's shoes? The mom didn't do much. She looked tired. After I thanked her, I thought that was the end of the interaction, but she started talking more. When I was her age, I was a shy turtle of a human being and didn't want to talk to anyone, so I was surprised at how social and amiable this girl was for being so young. She was talking to me for maybe like... 15 or so minutes, and I would tell you what we talked about, but the entire time I had absolutely no idea what she was saying to me. The fact that the plane jets were so loud and we were separated by an aisle made it so I could see her mouth moving, and it was obvious she was making sounds, but there was no communication going on between the two of us. It was an awkward 15 minutes of me smiling and agreeing and fake laughing, and I just let it happen. I hope I did good in that conversation. It was kind of like a multiple choice test and I didn't know any of the answers so I just randomly filled in bubbles. I hope she wasn't some devil worshipping possessed child and she said something like, wouldn't it be cool if Satan struck this plane down mid-flight and we hurled down to the earth in a ball of fiery terror? And I was just like, <laughs> yep. And with that, I'm back home and ready to work on videos again. I have no idea what the next one's gonna be about, but I'll think of something. Having no ideas isn't gonna stop me! This isn't me asking for video ideas, I don't take those for the most part, so don't comment any because I won't take it. Huge thanks to Jom for animating a few scenes in this video. He saved me a huge chunk of time and did a better job than I ever could dream of doing. Like, did you see that dope anime scene where I was talking about the moving sidewalks and going super speed? If you were like, Holy crap, Jaden, that was incredible! How did you animate that? It's because... I didn't animate it. <laughs> Go follow Jom on Twitter or something and tell him how great he is and how he's so much better than me at making my own videos. One more thing, if you haven't seen already, there's Ari plushes that are on pre-order right now if you want to get one of those bad boys. The order cutoff is Friday, August 11th, and after that it'll be a long time before you'll have the chance to get them again. The coupon code DOG is still gonna be active too if you want 10% off, and since they're pre-orders they're expected to ship in September. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and I love you and make good choices and don't do heroin.